Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a recent video I posted my re-entry script for the shuttle and the reason I was working on my re-entry script for the shuttle was not actually for STS-1 which I also posted videos for but rather for a mission to launch out of Vandenberg Air Force Base which you see here this is the launch out of Vandenberg in California to land in, at Edwards and do a polar orbit mission. So we are going into polar orbit and that was really what I was working on the re-entry script for because that's actually a very difficult mission to make the landing with uh, because the Earth is rotating basically. If, the, if you're on an east to west trajectory and the Earth is rotating it doesn't matter too much but if you're on a north-south trajectory and the Earth is rotating you need to use more of the shuttle's cross range if you don't actually line up with the landing site properly. And so mainly adjusting the re-entry script was in order to allow it to use more of the shuttle's cross range even though uh, for one reason or another in KSP the shuttle does not currently have as much cross range as it should. So we are in orbit, you can see it is a polar orbit, it's actually 96 degrees for the kind of mission that I was intending to do which was the servicing of a keyhole satellite. And I was testing this out during a live stream yesterday, this is what the video is from. And here we are phasing with Edwards Air Force Base. Now on the second orbit before landing, uh, we should be hitting a uh, coordinate of 73.4 degrees west we, uh, at the same latitude as Edwards, which is 34.74 north. And so we're a little bit too far west right now by about a degree. And a degree is uh, 60 nautical miles or at these latitudes probably around 100 kilometers. At the equator I think it's 111 kilometers or something like that. Uh, so yeah, it's a fair amount off east to west, but the shuttle should have the cross range to deal with that. Uh, and so we are continuing on and proceeding with the re-entry script. At one orbit before uh, re-entry, we will be at 95.9 .9 degrees west to hit Edwards. As far as lining up with the landing site is concerned, you don't have to worry too much about it. If it's the same site that you launched from, you just have to make sure you cover 24 hours. The landing site will be under your orbit in 24 hours. The fact that this is a different site than we launched from means I had to figure out the gap between the two, which is about 2 degrees, uh, which doesn't seem like much, but it's uh, something like 200 miles. Uh, well, actually a little bit less than 200 miles. So. Anyway, we have to sort of shift our orbit a little bit, but the shuttle cross range should also be able to deal with that. And yeah, calculating that is just a matter of getting into an orbit slightly less than one and a half hours and doing 16 orbits, basically. We do have a shuttle cockpit. I wanted to show that off. In fact, we'll uh, be using it during landing this time for once. Though with my post-processing mod, it makes it a little bit blurry and it sort of goes dark a little bit when I turn the camera. So that's somewhat annoying. Uh, so here we are on re-entry and again polar orbit, very interesting. Fortunately from polar orbits it doesn't have much trouble controlling Roland so the caps lock isn't strictly necessary but I like to use it anyway. Now one thing is I don't physical time warp during re-entry. If you do that will actually tend to make you fall short because you've got fewer physics frames and it's weird that way. Uh, so yeah how many physics frames you're actually getting will determine where the shuttle ends up. So that might be a minor flaw in trying to use my re-entry script in that it does sort of depend on your hardware to some extent. And yeah, that's been an annoyance. And that's why also with different versions of KSP I've had to change the re-entry script because, well, with different versions of KSP it performs differently. Which I really wish this was not a problem, but it's just how it is. Uh, it, uh, that's one reason why NASA has it easy in a way. They have infinite physics frames. Uh, anyway, so here we are. We are clearly turning towards the east because we are off by a degree and the shuttle is trying to use some of its cross range, but we need to make sure not to overdo that or we use too much fuel and also uh, you can see the overheating and you know there is a possibility that things can explode if we don't uh, be careful. Also you can see it's giving getting a little bit of lift, it's bounce, it's got a little bit of vertical speed there and that's for the best for cooling off as well. If I try and bring it straight down it tends to blow up so uh, that is how it is. 
again, the shell doesn't have as much cross range as it should, and it doesn't get as much drag as it should, uh, which is weird. So something that I need to try and tweak. But here we are. That is Edwards. That is as I have it. That's just my little thing I put in there. I haven't released it yet. Uh, so, yeah, I wish the surrounding terrain looked more like desert. I don't know why it doesn't in real solar system. Uh, but, yeah, it definitely does not look like desert around here. And we are clearly going too far. That's pretty obvious. Uh, we are we begin the pitch down maneuver at 35 kilometers. It used to be 45 kilometers, but uh, I had that yaw problem if you saw my previous videos, and that's why I reduced it to 35 kilometers. The rendering range for Edwards is limited, so it disappeared. And at 15 kilometers, it hands me control, and SAS turns on, and so now I'm in control, and I try and turn around towards Edwards. Um, Technically, from 15, the shuttle has a glide ratio of uh, 5, basically. And, uh, it depends on the flight regime. Right now, it has a little bit less than 5 because we're beyond the uh, speed of sound. It actually has a worse glide ratio beyond the speed of sound. By the time we turn around, we'll be at the speed of sound. So, it should cover 75 kilometers at 15 kilometer altitude or... 50 kilometers at 10 kilometer altitude, which is basically where we'll be at by the time I finish turning. And uh, so it's not ridiculous, but it's probably still pushing it a bit. I do dump the fuel. Uh, it's not going to add much to our speed here to light the OMS engines here. Whether you should light the OMS engines here, it's, it's, uh, it's more vacuum right now. It's not like sea level pressure, so it's probably not too bad. Uh, but... I dumped the fuel so that we have a better glide chance. So obviously the re-entry script is not perfect. Uh, it is not perfect and we could do some tweaking on this trajectory. And it was going long here on the SES-1 mission. It actually fell a little bit short, which is why I was a little bit shallow going into Edwards Air Force Base. So it wasn't much of a problem. So anyway, here we are and I decide to go with the cockpit view. So we do, we do make it. I mean, it's got barely enough to cover this kind of glide and it's not a ridiculous glide given the glide ratio of the shuttle uh, as long as you're subsonic and the reason why they go steep down and descend so quickly is uh, because they actually want to burn off the energy and get into a thicker part of the atmosphere quickly and they have the air brakes open our tail brakes do not actually do anything on this particular mod so it doesn't add any drag at all but on the real shuttle of course it does uh, add an enormous amount of drag, so that will help them slow down quickly, whereas we do not have that. Okay, so coming in. Gingerly, the runway is a little bit thin, <laughs> but it is a it is photo scenery and it should be scaled properly. All right, a little bit off center, but we are down. So there you have it, Vandenberg to Edwards, Polar Orbit Mission Test, with the same re-entry script that I posted. I didn't change the script except for, of course, um, making sure that we are landing at the right site. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.